Good morning, everyone. This is Larry Phillips. You joined us for the morning service of Grace, um, Pineville Grace Fellowship. We're going to be going over to talk to you here in about three minutes. And Brother Carl Roberts and Brother Mark Kennedy have agreed to uh, fill in this morning. I'm not doing really well. I've been pretty sick. Uh, I'm doing a lot better, but I'm still pretty weak. Um, uh, Mark is going to read some scripture for us, and then we're going to sing a couple of hymns and a psalm, and then we're going to go over to to talk to you. Okay, Mark. Matthew 24, 8 through 12. Actually, 8 through uh, 13. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall, and shall kill you, and you shall be aided of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise, shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay. The first hymn we're going to sing is 412, Rest for the Weary. Mm-hmm. In the Christian's home in glory, there remains a land of rest. There my Savior's gone before me to fulfill my soul's request. There is rest for the weary. There is rest for the weary. There is rest for the weary. There is rest for you. Pain and sickness ne'er shall enter. Grief nor woe my lot shall share. But in that celestial center, I crown of life shall wear. On the other side of Jordan, in the sweet fields of Eden, where the tree of life is blooming, there is rest for you. Sing, O oh, sing, ye heirs of glory. Shouts of triumphs as you go. Science gain will open for you. You shall find an instance food. On the other side of Jordan, in the sweet fields of Eden, where the tree of life is blooming. There is rest for you. Four forty five. As I stand by the side of the mountain, the mountain and view the handiwork of God. I reminded of life's glowing fountain, fountain, and the rocks built in there by Moses' rod. Let me stand, Let me stand by, the mountain, by the mountain, of the clear flowing brook would drink my fill. Let me rest by the fountain, and sit down at the top of Zion's hill. From the mountain my help surely cometh, my feet no more shall e'er be moved, and my cup day by day overfloweth, through the power of God is fully proved. Here the Lord our God is the keeper, on the right hand ever is our shade, he'll prepare us for that silent reaper. There the soul never more shall be afraid. Let me stand, Let me stand by the mountain, by the mountain 
Let me clear volume real quick, drink my fill. Let me rest by the fountain and sit down at the top of Zion's Hill. Okay, the last one we're going to sing is the psalm. Psalm 1, page 1 out of the Psalter. Oh, greatly blessed is the man who walketh not astray in counsel of ungodly men, nor stands in sinners' way. Nor sitteth in the scorner's chair, but placeth his delight upon God's law and meditates on his law day and night. He shall be like a tree that grows, stands by the water side, which in its season yields its fruit and green its leaves abide. And all we die shall prosper well. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff which by the wind is driven to and fro. In judgment therefore shall not stand such as the godly are, nor in the assembly of the just shall wicked men appear. Because the way of godly men is to the Lord known, whereas the way of wicked men shall quite be overthrown. We want to welcome everyone who's joined us this morning, and we're going to now go over to talk to you and see if we can get that uh, set up for the guys to do their messages message this morning. Um, bear with us for a second, Joseph Gulzar, and um, I see Marcus already with us on Facebook. Welcome to Talk Show. Please enter your PIN followed by the pound key. If you are not a TalkShoe member, enter one followed by the pound key. To get access to all features, sign up for a free account at TalkShoe.com. TalkShoe Live. This episode is being recorded and streamed live on TalkShoe.com. Please press 1 to accept and enter the online. You are joining the online studio. You are unmuted and can speak with the host. Recording started. Well, we want to welcome everyone that's joined us this morning. And uh, Brother Mark uh, Kennedy and Brother Carl Roberts have agreed to fill in this morning. Um, I had a, I found out what the problem was. I had a problem with the E. coli virus and it spread to eight states now and attacks the stomach, the bowels and the urinary tract. And I'll tell you, it's the sickest I've been in a long time. But I'm glad that I'm starting to come out of it. I'm gonna turn this over now to Brother Carl and Brother Mark here momentarily, and they're going to bring us the Word of God this morning. Um, and I appreciate them filling in for us. Um, and so with that, Brother Carl and Brother Mark, welcome aboard, and thanks for uh, filling in this morning. You got it, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. So glad you're feeling better. Thank you. It's an answer to prayer. Yes. Yes, it is. Good morning, Brother Good morning. Carl. God bless you. Good morning, Brother Mark. Yeah, Brother Larry, we're glad that you guys are better. Yeah. We're really glad that you're feeling better. Um, it's, a, it's an answer to a prayer. Um, um, Brother Mark, good morning to you as well. It's good to be in fellowship with you this morning. Yes, always. Um, what, I'm talking, what, 
I'm sorry, go ahead. Going around the eight states, huh, Brother Larry? Yeah, yeah. Wow. All right, well, praise God. All right, let's go. Go for it, Brother Carl. Uh, well, I thought we could do this morning is take a look at, at um, the story of Samson. Um, not the entire story, but what we'll do is we'll read the first chapter. We'll, we'll read chapter 13 in Judges, and we'll read chapter 16. Uh, Samson has um, has always been one of my favorite accounts in Scripture. Um, Samson himself, he's definitely one of the first people I want to meet when I get to heaven, by the grace of God. Um, the story, the, the account of Samson is such a miraculous picture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thought we could take a look at it together this morning, and by the grace of God, if He would be so gracious to us, to um, to let us see our blessed Redeemer in Sam. So, Brother Mark, if you don't mind, yes, sir, if you don't mind, Brother Mark, would you read the first 12 verses of chapter 13, and then I'll read the um, the the remaining verses. Um, and once you read your first 12, go ahead and make any comments that you would like, and then I'll make mine, and I'll read the other verses, and then we'll move. Then we'll make additional comments, and then we'll move to chapter 16. Okay, first, uh, Judges chapter 13, right? Yes, sir. Just read the first 12 verses, please. Very good. Very good. Good morning to all of our saints listening in, wherever you may be, in this big world that God has made. May Jehovah, the God of all comfort, who knows our needs before we pray, comfort you in this way and move you forward into his kingdom. All right, Judges chapter 13 in the authorized King James Version. Verse 1, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. Verse 2, And there was a certain man of Zor of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. Verse 3, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. Verse 4, Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. Verse 5, For lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. In verse 6, Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible, but I asked him not whence he was, neither told me his name. Verse 7, But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Verse 8, Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O oh my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. Verse 9, And God hearkened to the voice of Noah, and the angel of the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Verse 10, And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. Verse 11, And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And then verse 12, And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? And how shall we do unto him? All right, praise God. Well, wow, this is very interesting here. The... Uh, the verse where they tell where he 
where the woman is told to drink no strong drink and eat no unclean thing. That's very interesting. That's that's what they tell women in pregnancy today. Don't drink alcohol and and only eat good things like fruits and vegetables and stuff. And so that's very interesting. Now, um, this is very interesting. Um, let's see. Yeah, verse 5 here. This is very interesting. Verse 5. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on, on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the woman. He shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. That's interesting about no razor coming upon his head. That, that's interesting. That's an external sign of a spiritual, that's an external sign of a spiritual reality. And I agree with my brother Carl that Samson was used of God as, as an agent of physical redemption uh, of Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. And, and that is an archetype or a type or a picture of the ultimate sacrifice of the ultimate rescue of the elect of humanity from sin and death and corruption. That's wonderful. That's a very relevant uh, thing we're looking at today. Praise God. Amen. Is there anything else, Brother Mark? That's it. That's pretty good. Um, Brother Larry, would you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd, li I'd like okay. to, but I don't. I'll let you guys carry on this morning if you if you would. Okay. Well, um, just start out here. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that it, you know, it was, you know, it it wasn't Samson's physical stature uh, that you know gave him his strength. Um, you know, a lot of times we see in movies about Samson, um, and it's the same way with our Lord and Savior. They, you know, they portray him physically incorrectly. And Samson is treated the same way. He is shown as like this massive bodybuilder or something. And, and clearly that's, that's not the case. And this is displayed in the fact that we'll read later about no one knew what the source of his strength was. They were totally clueless to it. And as well, it's like with our Lord and Savior, you know, it was said about him, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Um, you know, that there was no, you know, there was nothing beautiful on the outside about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he was rejected and despised by men, you know, and Zora being barren, you know, and then called by God to conceive, you know, this is a picture of salvation being totally of, you know, totally of the Lord. Um, you know, Samson's birth, like our Lord and Savior, um, it is foretold of by, you know, by an angel, by an angel of the Lord. Um, the only other person in the Old Testament that this happened with, I believe, was Isaac. And Sarah there was a barren too. And again, this is a this is a picture of the sovereignty of God and salvation being totally of the Lord. Um, you know, say, you know, Samson is sanctified and set and set apart and made holy by God um through the um growing of his hair. And um, you know, this is a symbol of him being set apart by God. And this is where Samson got his strength from because he was sanctified and set apart and made holy by the Lord God. Um, in, in verse five, like brother Mark said, you know, we're told in Matthew chapter one, verse 21, when the angel speaks to Joseph, he says, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Samson here being told his mother being told, um, and he will begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines in verse five. That is that is a clear picture of that. Um, mm. Let's see here. Uh, um, yeah, okay. I think that's pretty much. I mean, there you know, there's there, there's so much here. You know, in the story, it's just it's so much here. Um, in verse 11, it says, And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Are thou the man that speaketh unto the woman? He said, I am. Is, I mean, could this be the divine name? Could this angel here, could this angel here of the Lord here be, be our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Interesting. Um, 
It's very interesting. Um, so yeah. picking up with verse two, so picking up with verse twelve. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass, how shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing, all that I commanded her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a cure for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread, and if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew that he knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? That when thou sayest come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why, why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass when the flame went up toward when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar and Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have shewed us all these things, nor would at this time have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and, and Eshtaol. Yes, in verse 23 here, we see that Zorah knows, she knew, because she had been told the Lord that God is that that God is just. And that he would not charge them with sin because the sacrifice, which is a picture of Jesus Christ, and I believe Zora and Manoah knew this, um, was accepted. So they knew that God was just and they would not be charged with their sin because, like we read here, um, but his wife said unto him, if the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would at this time have told us such things as these. You know, as they're looking on here, the angel of the Lord dances in the fire and ascends up into heaven. And Manoah mm -hmm. says, <laughs> and, and Manoah says, we shall surely die, but we have seen God. I mean, I wonder if they, you know, these people, they had the prophecy from Genesis 3. You know, they were waiting on the one to come. They were waiting on Shiloh. They were waiting on the Messiah to come and crush the head of their enemies. They were waiting on this. And I wonder what it was that they seen if they if they call a glimpse of the glory of God, which is which is salvation in our you know in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, and with that, I'll turn it over to Brother Mark for any comments, and then we'll move on to chapter sixteen. Thank you, my brother. God bless you this morning. Yes, this this there is a lot happening in this chapter. That is very that is very interesting how Manoah did not know that it was an angel of the Lord until he uh, started the fire and the angel went up back to heaven from from that fire in verse twenty and twenty one. That's very interesting, and that's when Manoah and his wife knew that it was not a human that was talking to them, but it was an angel an angel from the Lord in heaven. And then his wife, and then he said to his wife, we're going to die. But his wife spoke calm, reassuring words of reason to him. You know, why would God kill us? We just gave him a burnt offering. Why would he kill us? It's very reassuring to, to read this chapter and see the providence of God in it. It's really wonderful. And then in verse 24, the fulfillment of this message, this divine message comes in verse 24, and she successfully gives birth to the son named Samson. And the child starts growing, and the Lord blesses him. And then 
as we get into this later chapters of Samson's life, we see all the things he went through. And so it's really a lot that we can learn from looking at all of this. And I thank you, Brother Carl, for choosing this message this morning. This is really very relevant to all of the saints of God. Amen. Yes, and you know, in verse 1 of chapter 13, it says, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Philistines 40 years. You know, it reminds me of, you know, of the book of Genesis, you know, and Exodus, whenever the Lord leads the children of Israel into Egypt, you know, into bondage, and then he delivers them out, you know, because he is sovereign, he's in, you know, he's in total control, and, you know, this is a perfect picture of, you know, that salvation is of the Lord, and that he is in total control of everything that happens on this earth, everything, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've always loved this story, excuse me, I say story, I always loved this account um, of Samson and his life, and, um, I love, you know, reading scripture by the grace of God and seeing Christ in it. It's just, I mean, it's just so, it's just so miraculous. Um, yeah. So I guess let's just move to chapter 16. If you want to read the first 15 verses and make any comments, then I'll comment. And then I'll read the last 16 verses and I'll comment. You can comment and then we can discuss, you know, the story as a whole, you know, if you like to and just go from there. Sounds good, Brother Carl. Sounds good. Anyway, welcome to all of our saints that may have joined us in the meantime between our starting and now. God bless you all. Okay. Judges chapter 16 in the authorized King James Version. And I'll go from 1 to 16. Okay. Verse 1. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot, and went in unto her. And it was told the, and it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in, and laid wait for him all night in the, in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight, verse 3, and arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gates of the city and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Verse 5, and the Lord's of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. Verse 6 And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Verse 7, And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green widths that were never dried, then I shall be weak and be as another man. Verse 8, Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green widths, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Verse 9. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber, and she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson, and he break the wits, as a thread of tow is broken when it is when it toucheth the fire. So his strength was not known. Verse 10, And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. Verse 11, And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Verse 12, Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him, therewith and said unto him the philistines be upon thee samson and there were liars in wait 
abiding in the chamber, and he brake them from off his arms like a thread. Verse 13, And Delilah said unto his Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou might, mightest to be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. Verse 14, And she fastened it with the pin, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep, and went away with the pin of the beam and with the web. Verse 15, And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. Verse 16, And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Okay, wow, there, there's, there's really a lot in this chapter. This is, this is where we yeah. see beginning to go wrong for, brother, for Samson. He went down to Gaza in verse 1, and there he saw this woman of adultery, this prophet. And he and right away he starts going wrong. He went into her. And then in verse two, the the Gazites were told about this, saying that Samson has come here. And they laid in wait for him all night in the gate of the city. And they thought, Oh, in the morning we'll get him and we'll kill him in the morning. And then in verse three we say Samson laid Samson laid until midnight. And then at midnight he got up and he took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the posts and he literally ripped them out of the ground. I mean, that is incredible. And he took them away and he put them on his shoulders and he carried them up to the top of the hill in front of Hebron. That's amazing. And then in verse four, it came to pass afterwards that he loved a woman in the valley of Sor, whose name was Delilah. Now, I don't know if this is the woman from the first uh, couple of verses or this is somebody else, but but Delilah was very interesting. She was not entirely up front with Samson, as we see later on in this first half of the chapter here. So anyway... So the lords of the Philistines pulls her aside and say, "Look, look, we want we want to get this guy. You know, we'll give you we'll give you lots of money. You know, it shows here the eleven hundred pieces of silver from each one. We want to get this guy. So work this little scheme with us, and you'll be handsomely rewarded. See that that's the corrupting influence of unrighteous longing for wicked." right there. Isn't that amazing? And then in verse 6, she starts in on him. Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy strength lies, and how can we afflict thee? And then Samson gives him, and then I, I, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I think he knew what she was trying to do. And so we see it goes through the three episodes where she inquires, you know, how can we bind you and afflict you? And he tells, he tells her three phony stories every time, and then, and then there it shows that they were lying in wait in the very chamber. And then she calls out, "Samson, the Philistines are on thee!" And and he just snaps each thing off the the green cords, the fresh ropes, and then what was the third thing? The something about a spider web or something but this is so instructive and a warning to us you know that we should be careful lest you know we think we stand we must make sure of that you know that we should take caution to continue to work out our salvation with fear and trembling so this is this is such an instructive story that we should you know Take heed if we think we stand in the ways of God, we should take heed lest we fall. So this is really quite relevant to to all times. Thank you, Brother Carl, and God bless you. Amen. Yes, sir. I want to be real, you know, real, you know, real 
real careful here, real careful here because people might misunderstand what I'm saying here, but I believe that Samson here is a clear picture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And verse one, where it says that, he, that it, where it says that he went to Gaza and saw a harlot and went into her, this is a picture of Christ receiving sinners. Mm. All right, that's what this, that's what we are. All right, I mean, you know, Christ came to save and seek out that which was lost, and he comes, he came to save sinners, prostitutes, murderers, thieves, drunks, demonically possessed people. And this is a picture of that. In verse 3, where he takes the gates and carries him off with him, you know, Christ tells Peter, he says, on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is a picture of that. Amen. Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ um, carrying away the gates of hell, and the gates of hell being a defensive position, not on the offense. But as as pictured here in It's of hell and does away with them. Um, in verse 4, it says, And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And I tend to think as well, Brother Mark, that this isn't the same woman in verse 1. This, right. It says that he loved her. He says he loved Delilah. And like, and Delilah being, now she's a picture of several things. She's a, she's a, you know, she's a picture of, of Jesus. In the betrayal of Christ, and as she betrays Samson here, but she's also a a picture of us. She's a picture of the church. Like Samson loved her, Christ loved the church and gave Himself for it. And okay. and Samson knew what she was going to do, but because he loved her, in spite of what she was going to do, he was he still chose to love her, just like Christ does with us. Despite yeah. knowing what we, despite knowing what we are, and what we are are sinners. All right, He still loves us. All yeah. right, um, you know the fact that Samson loved Gentiles. <laughs> you know she was a Gentile woman. You know um, this is a picture of you know Christ bringing salvation to the Gentiles. Um, as we read here. And, you know, through verses 6 down through 13, there's several times, there's three There's three particular times where she asks Samson the source of his strength, and he doesn't tell her. Cries out, the Philistines are upon me, Samson, and they come in there to get him. Samson, Samson does away with them. All right, this is, this is a picture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ um, as well. You see, there's several times in the Gospels where the Jews lay their hands on Christ to kill him, but his hour had not come yet, and he doesn't let them. Right? Right. Like, like in Luke chapter 4, verses 28 through 30. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill, whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. Um, Amen. You know, I believe that, you know, Samson knew Delilah would betray him, just like Christ knows, you know, who it, you know, who it was, you know, who it was that would betray him in Judas Iscariot. But but yeah. Christ, but Samson, like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he still gave himself over to be delivered up. And this is and this is picture in Samson telling Delilah the source of his strength. Um, you know, and also right here where it says, <laughs> let me, let me pull up Matthew, pull up Matthew chapter 26, brother Mark, verse, verses 36 through, through 38. Matthew 36. Right. Yes, sir. Verses 30, 36 through 38. All right. Matthew 36 to 38. Right. Okay. So, so, so in verse in, in verse sixteen here in Judges sixteen sixteen, this is what we read. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death. All right. Ah. And let and let's look here in Matthew in the Garden of Gethsemane what it says about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All right. Verse 36, 
Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And that's what we're told here about Samson, that he is that his soul was vexed unto death. And this is a picture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the garden of, of Gethsemane. Very good. Very good. So I will I pick up from verse. No, sir. Yes, sir. You just go ahead. Go ahead and, and say what's on your mind. You doing okay, Brother Larry? Uh, I'm hanging in there. And... Uh, it's a beautiful picture you're painting for us this morning of the type of Christ represented in uh, Samson, and I'm, in, I'm enjoying this. I don't think I've ever heard a message uh, quite like this, and I, I find it very uh, um, enlightening. Yeah. Well, well, thank you, brother. God bless you. Okay, uh, we're going to finish the last half of 16 now, starting at verse 16. Down to verse 31. Okay. Verse 16. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him. Right. There it is again. So that his soul was vexed unto death. So she kept pressing him and pressing and pressing and pressing. So, and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Verse 17. That he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that, verse 18, he, and when Delilah saw that he had told her all of his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come upon this once, for he hath shown me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. Verse 19, And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. Verse 20, and she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. Verse 21, but the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. Ouch. <laughs> And brought him down to Gaza and bound him with feathers of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Verse 22. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Verse 23. Then the lords of the Philistines, Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God, and to rejoice, for they had... For they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. Verse 24, And when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, verse 25, When their hearts were married, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport, and they set him between the pillars. Verse 26, And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Verse 27, Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. Verse 28, And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me. 
I pray thee this only once. Uh, I pray thee only this once. O oh God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Verse 29, And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand, and of the other with his left. Verse 30, And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Verse 31, Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtal in the burying place of Manoah his father. And he judged Israel 20 years. Wow, this is very interesting. Okay, well, praise God. So, she continues, you know, we see here in verse 15 and uh, verse 16, she continues to bug him so that his soul was done to death, just like Jesus in the Matthew chapter that we just looked at. And so finally, you know, because he loved her and, you know, whether or not this love was misplaced or not, I don't know, but he finally, after the three, um, after the three stories of artifice where he told her something that wasn't true, he finally, you know, tells her the truth. And now why he would do that, I don't know. <laughs> So he finally tells it in verse 17, there has not, a razor has not been on my head because I have, I have been vowed a Nazarite from my birth, from my mother's womb. And if my hair is, and if my head is shaved, then my strength will go. And then, so we see here in verse 18, and when she finally knows the truth, she sends and calls for those who put her up to this deceptive work in the first place, and which is none other than the Philistines, of course. And so she tells him, come up here now, because he has finally told me, you know. And then in verse 19, it says she made him sleep upon her knees. Now, how, how, I don't know how that could be. I don't know how she could do that. But it says she made him go to sleep upon her knees, and then she called for the, sha the head shaver guy. <laughs> and they did it, and they cut off the seven locks of his head. And then here in verse 20, she says the same thing that she did those first three times. Samson, the Philistines are on you. Wake up, wake up. And he wakes up out of his sleep and says, I will go out at, the, at other times and shake myself. And he knew not, or he wished not, that means he knew not that the Lord had was departed for him. But the Philistines got him this time because this fourth time and final time, Samson very foolishly told her the secret of his strength. And I think that was a very foolish thing for him to do. I could be wrong, but I, that's just my opinion. So they got him and took his sight from him, his physical sight, by putting out his eyes. Whew, that must have hurt. <laughs> so, and they took him and they bound him with feathers of brass. And he was in the prison house, you know, and, and he did grind in the prison house, it says. And so, verse 22, when, his, when he was in the prison house, it says his hair started to grow again. So that means that he must have been there for at least six months or a year or two. You know, when your hair starts growing again, you, it's been a while since the last haircut. I need to get a haircut myself. <laughs> so, um, let's see, oh, yes, and then in verse 23, the lords of the Philistines 
you know, said, oh, it's party time. We got Samson our anime. Time to sacrifice to Dagon, our god. And it's party time. You know, because they said, our god has delivered Samson our enemy into our hand. And so, and then it goes through this whole long rest of the chapter where they were, they were having a wonderful time and, and they thought, oh, let's get Samson out of the prison house and mock him and sport with him, our captured enemy. And she's, and, and then he says to the, uh, to the person taking him by the hand, where was that? Uh, oh yeah, the la a, a lad guiding him by the hand because his sight had been taken. And he tells this lad, put my hands on these pillars, little boy leading me by the hand. Put my hands on these pillars, the central pillars of the house. And then, and then we see, you know, and then we see Hanson praying to God, dear Jehovah, one last time, let me die with these people. Give me strength one last time to do this magnificent thing for you. And I think that's, that's definitely a picture of Christ going to the cross. Absolutely. And so Samson is standing there with his eyes gouged up with his hand, one hand on the left pillar of the central pillar of the house and his other hand, his right hand on the right central pillar of his house, just <laughs> one time with all his strength, one last time. And he pushes the pillars down and the house collapses and kills them all and Samson and it says that uh where was that in verse thirty three uh, verse thirty and Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines and he bowed himself with all of his might and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. And it says, So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his entire life. That, that is amazing in his, and that also I think is a picture of the ultimate sacrifice and atonement of Christ. That Samson, in this one final act of greatness, killed more people, you know, than he did in his whole life. It's just what an amazing story, and and we see so many we see so many archetypes of the ultimate sacrifice of Christ in the story. In this whole story, what an amazing story! You know how how so many things in in Samson's life looked like total disaster, and then he looks up to God and says, "One last time, let me do something great for you, Job. A one last time." And we see so many similarities between this and the life of Christ. You know, where things in his, in Christ's life look like total disaster. But it was total victory, and the, and of course, of course, when Christ was put up on that cross, it looked like total defeat. But praise God, defeat was our uh, victory was snatched out of the jaws of defeat in the sovereign plan of Jehovah. Isn't it amazing? Oh, well, it's, it's quite yeah, it's quite miraculous. I mean, it's. Uh... I mean, that's, that was such a wonderful picture of our blessed Redeemer, you know. In, you know, in 15 and 16, where we read about it, you know, him being vexed in verse 16 unto death, like our Lord and Savior was contemplating the cup that he was fixing to drink, the wrath of God, um, on behalf of his elect, on behalf of his bride. That's clearly, that's clearly pictured here in verses 15 and 16. And once, you know, Samson's hour had come, and he knew it, he told the lie of the truth, where his strength lie. He knew he would be betrayed, just like our Lord and Savior did. He knew it, yep. But he did, but he still gave himself over because he loved his bride and gave himself for it. Um, we read that um, in verse 22 that the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaved. You know, we read in Scripture that the gift and the calling of God, they're without repentance. Amen. And what may seem like something that's very foolish to us was not foolish yeah. at all. This was in the divine purpose of God Almighty. He was the one mm -hmm. who ultimately softened Samson's heart and had him tell her his strength. And God himself 
delivered Samson over to the Philistines, which is a representation of our sin. And just like Satan working through the Jews, um, they led our Lord and Savior to be crucified upon a cursed tree where ultimately Satan would be defeated. So I did. He didn't know that him working through Judas Iscariot and these people and putting our blessed Lord and Savior, uh, you know, up on the cursed tree would cause his defeat, just like these people here didn't, right? And, you know, we, and these people, they say to themselves, you know, in, in verse 25, it came to pass when their hearts were merry that they said, call for Samson, that he may make a sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house and made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. They ridiculed him and mocked him, just like the Jews, and Satan did our Lord and Savior. But what they also did was they led our Lord and Savior to the cross, where they would be defeated, where Satan and sin and death would be defeated. They had no idea. These people had no idea what they were doing. They led Samson to these pillars, just like our Lord and Savior was led to the cross. All right, Amen. Just, like he was, just like he was led to the cross. All right, and, that, and, in verse, and in verse 26, Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me, that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. This was all in the divine purpose of God, even the prophecy that was given to his parents, where it says in chapter 1 that he's going to begin to deliver his people from the Philistines. All right, this is, what, this, is, this, is, this is a culmination, a fulfillment of that prophecy that we're reading about right here. Verse 27, now the house was full of men and women, all the Lord of the Philistines were there, and there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that the hell while Samson made for. While Christ was on the cross and being mocked, he bore, he bore the full weight as pictured in here with the house being full of all the sin of his elect laid upon his shoulders. In verse 28, and Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O oh God, that I may at once be avenged of the Philistines in my two eyes. This is Christ cried out to the Father. And my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand, and of the other with his left. So he has both arms extended. And this is Christ crucified with his arms stretched out upon the cursed tree. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the Lord and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew in his death were more than they which he slew in his life. This is Christ defeating sin and death on behalf of his elect. Then his brother and all the house and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between his own house. And, and, and etched to old in the burying place of Manoah, his father, and judged Israel 20 years. And his Christ being taken down off the cross and carried into the tomb of Joseph, Joseph of, of, of Arimathea. So Samson delivering his people from their enemies through his death. You know, it's, it's just as our Lord and Savior defeated our enemies for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. And this was all in the divine decree of God. And what, and what you know, looks like foolishness to us. Um, you know, you know, was all in the divine purpose of God. And I just think this is, this has always been one of my favorite stories, favorite accounts in scripture. It's one of my favorite pictures of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there's so much here. We didn't even touch on, you know, we just scratched the surface here, but, um, it sure was a blessing to do it. Amen, brother. You got that right. A total blessing. Yes. The similarities between this story of Samson, a type of uh, a type and a forerunner of Christ and and Christ and and the similarities in the events of their time on this earth are unmistakably clear. Yes. So Samson is definitely an archetype and a picture of Christ and his temporal and his temporal salvation of the Israelites from the Philistines points to the ultimate sacrifice and atonement of Christ, wherein he rescues his elect saints given to him by the Father before the foundation of the world, rescues them miraculously from sin, 
death, and corruption. What an amazing victory snatched from the jaws of defeat this is. Amen, Brother Mark. Um, Brother Larry, you have anything you'd like to, what yeah, you'd like to add? Yeah, that was a real blessing, and uh, the good Lord, good Lord was certainly with both of you this morning. And I was thinking, uh, I agree with you, Brother Carl, that representation of the angel of the Lord in the fire reminded me of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> and one was like unto the yeah. Son of God in the fire. But no, I, uh, I really have appreciated this, and it shows how God uh, has demonstrated himself over and over and over again, not only in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament, in the completed work of Jesus Christ. And uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, I, I, had never, yes. I had never seen the archetypes, uh, as many as there are in this account of Samson's life. And so I appreciate you're bringing that to our attention, and uh, the good Lord was certainly with you guys this morning. Amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Well, and we are, right, and well. we are glad you're feeling better. <laughs> well, yeah, it's still touch and go, but, you know, like I said, I know that the major problem has been taken care of. Now it's just getting the strength back. Uh, tonight, um, do you brothers have something that you can bring this evening? I was uh, doing some early scripture reading early, early this morning, about 5.30, o'clock, and I came across a real interesting story in 2 Kings chapter 1, I think it was, that okay. I'd like to talk about tonight. Okay, great. 2 Kings chapter 1. Great. Well, I'm sure glad the Lord has laid on, laid something on your heart, and um, I welcome uh, to hear what you have to say to us tonight, brother. Looking forward to that. Okay. So I, I was re I was doing some daily readings early, early this morning with my little uh, Bible Gateway app on my iPad. I listen to the Word, and as I read it, and it makes a double impact that way. Right. And so I do that in my daily readings. And so came across a real interesting story in Second Kings chapter 1. And I thought maybe we could look at that tonight, if, if you're okay with that, Brother Carl. Oh, yes, sir. That's fine. Where are you going to do? Well, um, well listen. Wonderful. Um, wonderful. Um, did you, um, you wanted to say something else, Brother Carl? Um, I was just going to close with um, just close with some scripture here. It's going to be First Corinthians chapter chapter thirteen, eleven through thirteen, in the authorized oh. King James version. First Corinthians thirteen, eleven to thirteen. Yes, sir. Very good. Very good. And it says uh, verse eleven. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. And now about it, faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Amen. That's wonderful. That is a wonderful verse. And of course, we know that charity is, is another word for love. And so it's amazing. Right, Brother Carl? Yes, sir. I believe it's talking about um, love amongst the brother. Yes, exactly. I, I, I concur 100%. Yes. Christian unity, this wonderful Christian unity that we have, something that the world could never have. We have, and it is so blessed. And we don't, we don't go, oh, hey, we got something that you don't have. No, because it's not of our own. It's from Jehovah, our Heavenly Father. So it's so, yeah. and so blessed that we have something that is from the Father in Heaven, our Heavenly Father, and we call no man on earth our Father. And so it's such a blessing. And 
You know, it's what sets apart it, the things that Jehovah has bestowed upon us is what differentiates us from the world. You know, we are in the world, yes, but we are not of this world. We we belong to a higher order of spiritual things because of the bestowal of Je Jehovah upon us. Now, isn't that wonderful? Yes. Amen. It sure is, brother. And like the you know, and like the word tells us, you know, what do we have that hasn't been given to us? Yes. Uh, we have no room to boast about any of it. Amen. That's right. That's right. Well, and you know, you and me, us three. Like you were telling me the other day, Brother Carl, I, I reminded, you know, that you and me and Brother Larry, I'm reminded of that uh, proverb, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. <laughs> so I just praise God for you brothers in my life. And I am so looking forward to September when we can all be together at least for a day or two. All right. Yes, well, praise God. Anything else, Brother Carl? Well, that's it. I'll just say to Brother Larry and Sister Rosette and Brother Mark Phillips and um and you, you know, that you know, you and Babs, we love you guys and we're glad that Brother Larry's feeling better. It's an answer to the prayer and um uh, uh, we'll see y'all this evening. <laughs> Sounds All good. Right. Sounds good. Well yes, I, I love you. I and will... let's have our announcement now. Okay, well, I want to thank uh, all the people who have joined us on Facebook. We have had some new people come on board. Uh, Joseph Bozar, uh, Alan Royal has been with us before. J uh, Javid Jacobs has been with us before. Uh, Oscar Graves has been with us before. Uh, we're, we're thankful for all of the, the comments that were made. Um, Eva Indies, Bashir, Bashir Lahan. Uh, we thank all of you, and we will be on this evening, and we will also be again on Wednesday night, and then we'll be back with you next Sunday. So we hope you all have a blessed afternoon, and Brother Mark Kennedy is going to be addressing us this evening. We'll be back with you at 6 o'clock, and um, hope you have a blessed afternoon. And with that, I'll go ahead and end the broadcast. Love you, brothers. Love you, too. Love you, too. Rosette, Mark, love you guys. Love you, guys. Call you later, Brother Carl. Yeah, yeah. same, same, oh, right. same you to you, Sister Babs. God bless you as well. Recording pod. Your line has been disconnected by the moderator. Goodbye. <laughs>